Welcome to Chapter 10. In this chapter I'd like to focus on evolution and sexuality. Humans have survived as a species in two forms, male and female. Males and females differ chromosomally. All men share a Y chromosome and they are therefore more similar to each other than they are to women. In addition, there are differences in hormones, differences in body size and shape, differences in brain structure and function. For example, the female brain contains somewhere between 10 and 40 percent more connective tissue between the two hemispheres of the brain, providing for greater integration of functions between the right and left hemisphere. Male and female brains differ functionally as well. Male and female brains differ in terms of where in the brain information is processed and how much brain energy or brain space is devoted to particular activities. All of these differences mean that males and females, although they politically may be equal, are not the same. And recognition of those differences means that both society and the individual can better prepare themselves to make the adaptations necessary for a society which provides for equal opportunities. Let's look a little bit at what some of those differences are, how, what their evolutionary roots are, and what the manifestations are in both modern and traditional societies. To begin with, there are cognitive differences between males and females. Males, overall, tend to have better spatial skills. They navigate the world differently than females do. Part of this traces back to an evolutionary origins of man as a hunter, needing to be able to to navigate geographic space in terms of direction and in terms of movement. Females, on the other hand, tend to focus more and be better at interpersonal skills. Typically they have been responsible for child care and certainly the raising of the young is necessary for the species to survive. Women have had to recognize the emotional expressions of very young and nonverbal children. They've had to recognize and adapt to the emotional expressions of the fellow the women who worked alongside them. They had to be able to express their emotions better and able to communicate with other females working within the group. Males on the hunt could typically limit their verbal activities to short sentences and short emotional expressions without the degree of verbal fluency that, seg that, excuse me, that typifies women throughout the world. Women are more holistic than men are. Part of this has to do with the increased connective tissue between the hemispheres of the brain. Part of it has to do with multitasking or the ability to do more than one thing simultaneously. Women can take care of the needs of several different children at once. At the same time, they're communicating with other people. At the same time, they're preparing a meal and supervising perhaps a child in another household task at the same time. All of these activities require coordination and holistic perception. Men, on the other hand, appear to be better at single focus tasks, having a one-track mind, keep concentrating on the hunt, not paying attention to the hunger or the pain in their feet or the changing time of day, concentrating and getting the job done, seem to characterize or typify male behavior. Again, this may lead to differences in learning styles that if a school accommodated itself to those differences might provide for better learning opportunities for both males and females. In terms of physical differences, males have greater upper body strength, they have greater muscle strength, and greater bursts of short-term energy. Again, these things made them better hunters. Women have greater flexibility, adaptability, and endurance. These things provided the ability to gather roots and berries, stretch, and coordinate activities with other members of the group. Behaviorally, males and females different, differ in terms of what turns them on sexually. Men like variety and they like things to turn them on visually. Again, men responding to variety and responding to quick visual signals makes, it a, makes them able to spread their seed and pass that on to their offspring. For females, preferring a single man and preferring romance is an assurance that somebody will be there with them during their time of need, and this seems to be biologically built into the species. Females prefer to stay in one place and talk. Men prefer to roam, travel, and do. They're the action members of the species. Again, this have a, has an evolutionary basis in terms of survival. Men are more aggressive. 
This makes them not only better hunters, but better protectors. Women tend to be better at talking and negotiating, and this makes them better able to get along within the group of people that stay home and do the household tasks. Again, it doesn't mean that there can't be equal opportunities because there is a great deal of overlap between the male and female of the species, but what it does mean is that if cultures, the workplace, the educational environment adapts to those differences, both males and females 